Welcome on in folks. I'm Tyler Henderson. Thanks for joining us here for East Texas in focus. Let's go ahead and get started tonight. Tonight we are focusing on fentanyl crisis present across the nation, but right here in East Texas too, discussing how this powerful drug is getting to our streets, the dangerous and deadly risks it poses, and the importance of understanding the drug in order to pre prevent its grip. Now, according to the Texas Department of State Health Services, poisonings by fentanyl kill an average of five Texans each day. That's five sons, daughters, friends, and every 24 hours. And with fentanyl overdoses becoming the number one killer for Americans every year between the ages of 18 and 45. And it was just last year, the synthetic opioid, which is up to 50 times more deadly than morphine, accounted for about 45% of all drug-related deaths here in the Lone Star State. The particularly deadly issue with illegally manufactured fentanyl is that it's found in heroin, cocaine, methamphetamine, and in counterfeit pills, especially as a result, many people may not know they're ingesting fentanyl, leading to that death of an unsuspecting Texan and many Americans across the country. We are in our main drug vault that houses a little over 50,000 pieces of evidence. A rare look inside the DEA's drug vault in Dallas. The lab's assistant director, Jamie Vasquez, walks us through the evidence. All drugs seized by federal agencies from five states and sent here to be tested. Our vault processes it and stores it until it's time for our forensic chemists to analyze it. And our forensic chemists determine the content of the evidence as well as sometimes the purity of it. What kind of drugs do you get that move through this lab? The number one drug that we see is methamphetamine, followed by cocaine, fentanyl, and then heroin. Has fentanyl always been in the top three? It has changed drastically over the last five years. We've gone from submissions of 3% fentanyl to now close to 20% of what we see contains some sort of fentanyl. In this case, it's powder fentanyl. This kilogram can be divided up and made into pills if you're thinking anywhere, if you're talking two milligrams per pill, we're talking about upwards of 500,000 pills. But 80% of the time, the lab sees fentanyl pressed into pills. This is about a little over 12,000 pills. And what have you found? On average, our pills contain roughly two milligrams of fentanyl per pill. One pill tested from a bag of thousands. Just swab it, place that in this water. The water goes on the test strip and in just a matter of very little time. Shows the results in less than a minute. As you can see from this line on this test strip, we have a positive for fentanyl. So assuming that this, each tablet contains two milligrams, we have enough doses to potentially cause overdoses for over 12,000 people. Pretty incredible stuff there. Well, from law enforcement to education and harm reduction today, we want to dig deeper into the efforts to save lives. That's why once again, we're bringing in Smith County Sheriff Larry Smith to talk more about this very important subject. Sheriff, thanks so much for giving us a little bit of your time. Let's Thank dive you. right into it. I mean, we heard it right there. I mean, a lot of people have heard about it, whether that's from us in the news, I mean, friends, family, what it may be. But what really is fentanyl and then why is it so different than every other drug that's out there? Fentanyl is a synthetic analgesic. It's in the domestic manufacturer uh, in the laboratories. Uh, not, not to talk about that, that's manufactured clandestinely in Mexico. It's uh, for cancer patients usually. Uh, it's about 40 times more potent than heroin and probably 100 times more potent than morphine. Uh, it's very easy to overdose on it, especially that that is uh, clandestinely manufactured and comes across our uh, border with Mexico. Right, and that leads right into our next question here is, what makes it so deadly? What is so dangerous about it? And a lot of that is kind of what you alluded to there, that you don't know who you're getting it from and you don't know how much of it you're getting. Right. The, the uh, chemicals, come, uh, the precursor chemicals come from China to Mexico. Uh, it's domestically manufactured in Mexico, uh, it, it not by laboratory people. It's just off the street per personnel that are just manufacturing it. So uh, the size of a pinhead of fentanyl is enough to cause overdose death. And they do not know what they're doing and how they're manufactured. They, they cannot, there's no quality control is, is uh, basically what it uh, amounts to. And so when you're dealing with a, piece the size of a pinhead 
in a, in a large manufacturer uh, you don't know what's going into the pills that are being stamped uh, in Mexico or into the heroin to where they can allow it to cut the heroin more often and produce more of it with the same potency by adding the fentanyl. So it's used in all kinds of drugs for, for doing that. Absolutely. Now, we know that it's getting into the U.S., getting into Texas, East Texas specifically, and right here in Smith County too. But now, once it gets here, how is it getting into the hands of these teenagers and, I mean, other people that may just come across it? Uh, from what we understand and what we have uh, witnessed, it comes across the border. It, it's uh, any fentanyl manufacturer that, that is found to be uh, any uh, clandestinely manufactured fentanyl that comes from Mexico was touched by the cartel's hands. Uh, that they get the precursor chemicals from, from China, manufactured in Mexico, comes across the open and porous border in the uh, in the heroin and the uh, they're, they're even lacing. Uh, uh, marijuana with it now mm. and but the pill presses that they have that make tablets look exactly like the tablets that come out of your drug stores and again that the size of a pinhead is enough to kill we've seen multiple deaths here just in smith county alone we filed murder charges on i believe at least two uh here uh that have sold the uh fentanyl uh two uh persons who have uh, uh are deceased now because of it Right, and a lot of times people, like you said, they just don't know that it's in maybe an ibuprofen tablet, something that they mm -hmm. think, well, here, a buddy of mine just giving me something to help me out. Right. You just, you just don't know. And we've heard the one pill kills. That's mm -hmm. been a message that's gone around for some time now. So what exactly does that mean in that message from the state? What does it mean? What was your question again? Right. So they, we, we've heard the state send out messaging. Oh, okay. It is one pill kill. So yeah. what, what, what is that message being given? Uh, that anything that you don't know where it came from, unless it comes from a, from a drugstore uh, manufactured in a pharmaceutical plant in the United States or, or a trusted pharmaceutical plant, you don't know what you're getting. And again, you don't know what you're getting unless you get it from the drugstore because again, those clandestinely manufactured look exactly identical to the, the pill presses are very, very well uh, built. And uh, they can make the, uh, the uh, tablets look exactly like uh, those from the pharmaceutical. Right, we heard in that first story there that we led the show mm -hmm. off with that, you know, it, it just seems like it, it, the, and over the last five years, the presence of it has grown. Have mm -hmm. we seen that specifically here in East oh, Texas? Oh, absolutely. We, we, we have overdosed. Uh, we've had a lot, lot of overdoses, multiple overdoses. We've had uh, six deaths uh, in the county, I believe, uh, over the past couple years. But everywhere I go, to, uh, whether it be to a national sheriff's conference or anywhere in the United States, uh, I talk to other sheriffs. They're having the same issues in every state in the United States, uh, which tells me that there is a lot of fentanyl coming across the open and porous border. Uh, because again, that's where it comes from. Uh, we don't typically get, uh, they stopped uh, when we, the clandestine manufacturer of methamphetamine. Uh, it stopped in about 1990. Uh, the precur precursors were no longer able to come from China to, to the United States, went to Mexico. The same thing, fentanyl has followed the same track. We never allowed them in the United States, go to Mexico. So the unintended consequence, they're unabatedly manufactured there and coming across the open and porous border. So really the only thing we can do is close the border. Right. To, to get a, 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 a hold of this epidemic. Right. And it is an eye opening realization, no doubt about it. I think that's a good spot to wrap up this first segment with Sheriff. So when we come back, we're going to have more with Sheriff Smith and a more in depth look at fentanyl right here in East Texas. We'll be back in a few minutes.
Welcome back. We're focusing on fighting the fentanyl crisis right here in East Texas. In the past five years, drug overdose deaths, they've increased across the state by more than 75% as one way to combat this unfortunate trend. Lawmakers last year also passing House Bill 6, that new law increasing the penalties related to the, the sale and production of fentanyl, classifying the overdoses from the drugs as poisonings, triggering murder charges for those convicted of giving someone a fatal dose of fentanyl. So far under the new law, at least 46 people in Texas have been charged with murder for allegedly providing deadly doses of fentanyl. And that includes this man, 24 year old Nadarius Houston. He was charged recently for the murder of a 23 year old overdose victim from Tyler. Houston reportedly sold fentanyl lace pills marked M30 that ultimately caused the man's death back in April and after an autopsy and toxicology report confirming fentanyl poisoning this summer, the Smith County Sheriff's Office charging Houston with murder. Now around the country, the, the law enforcement and prosecutors are doing the same thing, sending a strong message to providers. Also this summer, the Denver DA and police police chief announcing an arrest of a fentanyl distributor there in California. That person allegedly selling the drugs to 28 year old Tyler native Colin Walker. Walk Colin died last year of an overdose and he was a college student there in Colorado. During that case, we also heard from Colin's mother, like many other victim families, and she says she never thought this was going to happen to her family or her son. Take a listen to what she had to say. I wish I could have warned Colin. I wish I could have warned my son. And anybody that has a son or daughter going to college, high school, they need to know that it just takes one pill. One pill will kill you. And I guess that's the main thing I want to say is to these kids is one pill kills. As far as the man accused in Collins death, they're charging him with distribution of fentanyl resulting in death that holds a similar prison sentence as homicide. Well, let's go ahead and get back into it with Sheriff Smith joining us today again. Thank you for being here. Yes, sir. We uh, obviously heard that heartbreaking testimony from a mother there and in the break you were telling me a pretty eye opening statistic about how deadly this thing is once it gets into the country. Absolutely. And so what, what was that number for everybody at home? Because I mean, it, it really is shocking. There, there has been enough fentanyl that has been interdicted in the United States to kill every citizen in the United States of America. Wow. Hmm. I mean, it, it's absolutely heartbreaking. We also said, you know, it doesn't, it's not targeting anybody. It could be, right. it could be a teenager. It could be an adult. It could be a college student like we just heard. And so with House Bill 6 going into effect just about a year ago, mm -hmm. I mean, what, what is that law? We heard a little bit of it there, but what is that law? And have we seen any improvement on the, uh, as far as the charging goes? We have, and as uh, the past president of the Sheriff's Association of Texas, uh, part of my duties were, were to testify on bills such as that uh, at, at the legislature. And uh, we've had several people uh, from the Sheriff's Association testify, and that has enhanced tremendously uh, the punishment uh, for the, uh, the first one that has enhanced it. For, it. It brought the minimum sentence up to 10 years. Uh, to life or 99 years or life. Mm -hmm. And if you possess a, a certain quantity more than that, it brings it the minimum to 15 and uh, keeps going upwards. Wow. And so now when you're looking at charging somebody like that, mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, you said in the first block too, and you said just a minute ago that we've seen people right here in Smith County mm -hmm. get charged with murder for, right. for these and I would assume because of House Bill 6 plays a huge role in that. So whenever those charges are being determined, I mean, how did that change? How did House Bill 6 change that? And then how do you determine whether it's, well, you're just dealing or the fatal dose that you could be charged with, say, a murder charge like that? Uh, it, it depends on uh, the, uh, again, it depends on the amount of fentanyl that was interdicted, uh, the amount possessed. And uh, again, if it caused death, what would happen is we get with the district attorney's office when we're getting ready to, to file a case and prosecute, and 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, our district attorney is going to go with the maximum sentence right. uh, potential, and that's what's going to be prosecuted here in Smith County. Right, and I, I love that you mentioned that because that leads right into my next question here is with a message of you 
will try to charge people with a life sentence. What message are you trying to send to those who are dealing it, those who have possession of it? Here well, in what we're trying to send, we're, we're sick and tired of it. We're tired of seeing our children, our youth uh, murdered uh, uh, by the deadly fentanyl coming across the open and porous border. We're, we're ready to put a stop to it. We're going to put a stop to it some, one way or another. Uh, but until you've been in a bedroom where there, there's a 17-year-old laying there that uh, mother and dad expected to be getting up, going, getting ready to go to school, they don't get up, they don't show up in the, in the dining room to, to eat breakfast, and they find them dead in the bed, and you sit there and, and trying to console them, that, that's, that's about as bad as I've seen it in my law enforcement career. Wow, and like you said, you've been in it for 48 years, so you, you, see, you, say, you think you've seen it all, and then something new happens. Right. Now, let's talk about let's talk about Narcan, the effectiveness mm -hmm. of Narcan. So what is that for people that may not know what it is and then what how does it work? Narcan, it can be uh, administered two different ways. There's two different kinds of Narcan. One is uh, by needle in, in the thigh usually. The other one, the most popular one, the ones w that we try to get out to people is a nasal. It goes through the nasal cavity uh, and it's administered uh, mostly just for uh, opioid overdose. It can help and it can save people with deadly fentanyl, uh, but it's usually going to take more than one dose to, to do, of Narcan to do it. And, and there's really no overdosing qualities of using too much Narcan. Uh, it, it, what, it'll either work or it won't work, but it's not going to cause death itself. Uh, so uh, we have Narcan pretty much all of our patrol units at all times. Uh, the emergency medical services now carry Narcan, mm -hmm. and a lot of people that uh, th that are the abusers of it will carry it themselves and mm -hmm. administer Narcan to themselves. But we've wow. had deputies that have saved multiple uh, throughout the last several years, five to ten years, have saved several uh, overdose victims. Oh, it's very encouraging, at least to, for me, with somebody with kids and mm -hmm. the, the law enforcement here being proactive, taking that next step. Right. So, Sheriff, thank you for sharing that. But when we return, we're going to take a look at fentanyl at the border to our neighborhoods and an important message to parents at home. We'll tell you all about that right after a quick break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Fentanyl, unlike cocaine or heroin, is a synthetic drug. That means it's created in a lab and precursor chemicals that are smuggled from China and they end up in the hand of cartels in Mexico. Those criminal groups, they then turn those chemicals into fentanyl before flooding it into our country through, through a porous southern border.
It starts here at the border. The DEA is the first line of defense. It's all about money. It's about the dollar bill. It's about greed. And that's who we're going after. Special Agent Daniel Como from the Houston Division tells us drug cartels are mass producing synthetic fentanyl with deadly precision. Let's look at this. So here's two pills. One would think that this is the fake counterfeit pill. But the reality of it is, this is the one made by a drug cartel. So you might have even uh, someone as young as a middle schooler saying, well, I heard about the Xanax. So let me take the Xanax one time just to, to get a, a high effect. And they take one of these fake pills and they end up dead. 70% of these pills contain a lethal dose. You would think that it's not a good business model for these drug cartels to be killing off their clients. You know, that's the biggest question to ask. And the only answer that I can come with Every time someone dies, there's someone else willing to experiment again. And unfortunately, as long as that continues to be the trend, the drug cartels will stay in business. Last year's lab results show the DEA seized 521,000 fentanyl tablets. Look, we're aggressively targeting them. and we're, we're doing it in so many different ways now. We're going on websites, we're going on social media, we're going on all of these apps. Wherever they are, we are too now. Special Agent Como says parents need to do the same. Every single parent should talk to their kids about this right now because it's not necessarily, uh, say, a drug dealer that will push this pill on it. It could be their best friend. It could be their peer. And if you don't have those type of conversations with the kids, they might think nothing of it. Well, that was a perfect representation there. You saw the two pills early on. I mean, they looked identical. Now, prevention can go a lot of different ways, but mm -hmm. really what we want to talk about, Sheriff, is give a message to the parents of East Texas. I mean, they're, they don't know what their kid is doing at school. Right. They don't, you know, they don't, they can't always be there. So right. what is your message to parents? Well, you want to be as much of a friend to your, your son or daughter as, as you can, but you have to, nowadays, you have to know what they're doing, where they're doing it. You have to get in their business, uh, if you will. And, and uh, because again, uh, if it gets too far down the road, and you're not there to help them. And, and again, if you have Narcan available, that still might not do it. Mm -hmm. But know who they're running with, know who they're, uh, who they're around, and, and, uh, and, and have those hard talks with them before it gets to that point, before they get to the age where they, obviously, uh, we've all been there, know everything themselves yeah. and, and can't, can no longer be convinced to, to do the right thing. And there's, a, there's always two sides to every coin. Absolutely. So, talking to the parents let's talk to the students what mm. what is your message to students out there and you have a great resource you were telling me about where they can get some help yes uh, we have the Texas Anti-Gang Center uh, East, and, uh, we're the seventh tag of nine in the state of Texas there uh, it's a governor Abbott is the one that came up coming up with the concept and it's uh, funded through the governor's office and we have federal state and local law enforcement under one roof we have all kinds of capabilities, all kinds of technology that, that I never dreamed in law enforcement we would have. And it has been great to, to do the interdiction and, and work with the different agencies and, uh, in combating this. And uh, we're making great strides in doing so, especially uh, if, if you saw this past week, this new gang that, that Governor Abbott uh, spoke about. Uh, they continue, they're going to continue coming into Texas and continue to every state in the United States until, until they're stopped. Uh, there's no reason for them to stop. They're not going to stop on their own. And also, what all else comes with it, uh, uh, I never thought until I went to the Pentagon after the plane hit it that we'd have people come into the United States of America, learn to fly a plane and fly it into the Capitol and the World Trade Center. I, I saw firsthand after I was sent to the Pentagon after that happened. and everything else including the fentanyl coming through the open border is of the 160 different nationalities coming through the open border what are people here in the United States waiting to be told to do at any drop of the hat right by, by whoever's controlling them right well sheriff thank you coming up after the break we're gonna get some closer words from sheriff Smith after a few minutes stay with us
Welcome back, Sheriff Smith. Uh, just let's let's just wrap this show up. What what is something we may have touched on today or may not have touched on today that you'd like the folks at home to know? Well, uh, I believe what has got to happen uh, to, to, to that we can do. Uh, short of stopping uh, stopping up the border but what the parents can do is is be vigilant about who your ch children are running around with be vigilant about checking on what they bring in and out of the house and and do things that that uh, we would never as we were growing up want our parents to have to do for us but in order to save our children until something else happens that we can get it stopped that's that we're going to continue losing our youth and uh until we, we can do all we can do to stop it. And then law enforcement uh, has to do their job and, and the prosecutors and, and everyone else has to do uh, what has to be done. Well, Sheriff, thank you so much. And thank y'all. We're going to zero in on some more issues here at home next week on East Texas in Focus. Have a good night, everybody.